put it in them early. Oh, did we we already went. What do we do? Oh, we're live. Oh, how'd you finish so soon? I mean, God, bro, you're so premature. Well, I'm 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 kind. They'll start whining because the mountains out of you. Snow lines miles above them, they begin to root. They're not human beings. They're just snakes in the snow. This is fucking unbelievable. What other surprises you got? What the fuck is you ever get the feeling that everything in America is completely fucked up? Fucked up. Fucked up. Fucked up. You know that feeling? The whole country is like one inch away from sleep. Well, I thought that was swimming for a second. Take a bottle. Shush, bro. Schools, man. That doesn't sound like a monster to me, lady. <laughs> you want a monster? I'll give you a monster. <laughs> no, it was only a joke. Is that why I'm laughing so hard? Now, don't be afraid. This eliminates the You point it. And people fall down. You point it, and people fall down. Yeah, what? Hey, now point it at me. You know, let's take it back, sir. You know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna take my chances with Daddy. You are such a disappointment. You're gonna be a punch. Face. Try again. So we got a new intro again. Yeah. Who crafted this one? Me. Who else is here? Oh. Crickets, crickets, crickets. That's oh right. boy. Okay. See, you know what? I have to get yeah. to it. God. Walking Dead, the ones who live. I think it's done done. It is. Uh it is. But l- before we do that, let me just say this. This is what happened yesterday with the fucking show street. I- I'm I very much want to do a show. I've got a bunch of things. Like there are these topics uh and-, and talking points that have been rolling in my head for like four fucking weeks right now. Like I said, some of them were for fucking night creep. Some of them were for this or that. Um, and they've gone nowhere. So I got all this like built up uh, content. Full knowledge. <laughs> right. Content, if you want to call it. And and I go to do a show yesterday. I set it up. I fucking do all the work prepping it, getting all the topics together, or visuals, this and that. Then I sit there and I wait uh, for the timer to run down for the show to start. And I just get more and more bored as, as the time goes to where then when it starts, I'm, I'm just like this. I talk like this. And this is how it's been now for a, a, a while. Um, it's just like I want to. And then as soon as it starts, you lose it, the urge. The energy completely dies. Especially right before this, you tell me there's two episodes of Discovery waiting for me. I know I've got a big death apparently on the Connors. Um, oh, yeah, they've been they've been saying this since before the season that it's going to be a major character death. A lot of people speculate it's the mother Beverly because she's like 93. Estelle Peters, I think, is her name or Peterson. But was it Peters or Peterson? Doesn't matter. But um. She can't be her because she had dementia and then she got better and then she ran away and got on a train and just wanted to go live her life and die on her own accord. So they sent her off to die, essentially. And they even joked about it, how like, you know, Jackie, Aunt Jackie, let it happen. Uh, And you just like let her fucking like they were acting like this this beautiful moment of freedom and liberation. But then in the last scene, they're like, so you let a woman with dementia on a train alone <laughs> with, with 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 no bags and no matter she's, and she's just like e- yeah so they can't make it her because you know what i'm saying because then that trauma that this characters should be feeling it's it just c- 
contrasted with that joke way too hard. So it can't be her. And that would be fucking stupid. Um, they're saying it's somebody major. I suspect it's going to be Sean Astin because he's a new cast member and he plays uh, Becky's uh, airplane pilot boyfriend. And he's just he's like really integrating with the family and he's getting along real well with her daughter. So I believe he's going to get dead. And they kill him off rip. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I I mean, come on. Come on. You think you're really adding Sean Astin to the cast of... um, fucking the Connors? I don't think so. Hey, MIP, hello. First time, long time. Big fan of Lou. We got another Lou fan here. MIP, welcome to... Um, yes, Dr. Scotty Jones, an aeroplane pilot. Um, I believe it might be him, though it could be Aunt Jackie. It could be Dan. The show, if they really are going to end now with this season, needs to kill Dan. Because that's that's just the most um, uh, perfect way to end this series, this fucking thirty fucking plus year franchise. But speaking of franchises that'll go on for thirty plus years, back to what you said about The Walking Dead. Yes, that was the end. They kept it a secret because they, if they told you this was a limited series, then you know exactly how it ends. He's getting home. Um. Yeah, if, and if you read about what it was to what it is now boy oh boy that finale kind of fucking sucked because they just jumped through it it was just like it felt like a quick jump yeah five episodes of building up this tension and drama and all this other shit and then fucking all that's just resolved in 30 minutes in like he fucking literally changed the world by like blowing up some gas cans i mean kind of fucking weird i mean it it hooked me and for that finale, I was like, "Oh, how about you just call me?" Dad. God damn it! I hope that's internet. What did you say? My one of our internets popped out. Why don't you just call me, Dad? That was a good scene though, where like Michonne it's runs a up. Nice scene that they're there, but that whole no. it felt so dumb. No. No, yes, but the scene when when Michonne runs up and the, Judith runs into Michonne's arms and fucking RJ runs into Michonne's arms and the three of them are like reuniting in this big sobby moment and then Rick is just standing behind them like five feet with his head down all fucking bashful and like all mopey dopey like that was a cool hmm. scene. No, you got to give me them in season uh, a season two where now they just go look for Daryl and the whole crew gets reunited. Well, you didn't see Daryl. This ending also confirms the line in the finale of the Daryl Dixon show where Carol says he finally gets a hold of Carol and she just says to him on the the radio, he's back. And then Daryl's like, what? Who? Who's? And then the fucking call cuts off. You know, bad cellular service in the zombie apocalypse. (laughs) I'm gonna watch Daryl because the whole, the whole um, uh, this is something we got again. It, it looks interesting. Yep, I have a fondness for the nigger word. What's wrong? Fuck you, nigger what? Nigger who? Uh, nigger who? Nigger please. <laughs> My coffee just came out. Oh God! Way to give it away, Mason in Portland. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Oh, wait, I got a good one, Lou. I got a real good one. Good job. Free Mason. Oh, you, you, you ready? Free Mason in Portland. Ha ha. I got him really good there. <laughs> got him free. Him. You said I put free in front of the word Mason. Call him, I'm calling him a free Mason. Uh, Dr. Scotty Jones has a fondness, a fondness for the R word, which is why you're here, obviously. Okay, so but which R word are we saying? Racist? Are we saying retard? Which one? Robot. Uh, Robocop. That's what we're rumble, saying. Rumble. Like which R word? There's a lot. Wriggle. Like Rob Wriggle. <sighs> hey boys, got uh, my latte now. Wow me. Okay, yeah, you came to the wrong show for a while. But, you know, <coughs> five episode build up, <coughs> the fucking general, I felt they under underutilized. Yeah, them. 
Yeah, that was a fucking, yeah. Who's that guy from? Terry O'Quinn or Terry Quinn, whatever his name is. I don't know. I, I only remember he was in Lost and a few other programs okay. that I may have seen him in. That's what it is, Lost. I never saw Lost, but I remember him from all the, like, as soon as you said Lost, I picture him on that island in all the trailers. Yeah, he, he was stellar in Lost. He was a great. But it but, was just like, if you're going to, if that was going to culminate everything, you should have made that a two-hour episode. Oh, for sure. Because it was three movies, and they revealed all the plans originally. The first movie would have just been Rick, uh, and it would have been everything you saw in the first episode with no Michonne at all until the second movie. Um, so when you, when, you, when you learn that, it's like, wow, what, what they did was they just kind of chopped up fucking two movies uh, and then threw them into the last episode. one, you know. Made yeah. Well, I guess they chopped uh, chopped up three movies, but I don't know. It just felt a little disjointed. Their plan is now, though. Uh, we still need to have the Rick and Daryl reunion. So they said this is not the end for Rick and Michonne, and they will have them in the future franchise episodes as much as their schedules will allow. So. That's, How long do you plan to run Daryl? I mean, Daryl's in Paris. Yeah, but Carol's going after him, and uh, it's probably going to be another season or two of Daryl because they've got to reunite Daryl with Nick, uh, Nick, Rick, because I was going to say, and then Negan and Maggie, they're also talking about getting uh, Daryl down to New York for some of that, too. But did I say Daryl? I meant Rick. So uh, have, according to you, because you stayed through the whole main show. I've watched every episode of everything except for World Beyond. You have to explain why Negan left Judith and RJ. Well, he left her with with he left her with um Carol. They explain it in the um, in the Dead City cuz Maggie needs him to go after Herschel cuz somebody kidnapped Herschel and it's all a big plot. It's really just, uh, I don't know, if you ever see it, I'm not going to tell you so. But uh, Dead City, I have no interest in. I think you'd like it. It's the story of Negan inadvertently building, a, a, becoming Negan again, building a new sanctuary. But this time, the sanctuary is all of Brooklyn or all of the Bronx. Like, he literally gets control of an entire borough of New York City at the end, and that becomes the new sanctuary. So, like... He's got, you know, he's back to leather jacket and baseball bat, Negan. In his old ways? Well, uh, he's going to do it a new way, you know. Uh, but he's got, he, he's under the govern of another person as well. You know, the person, whoever's running running New York City as a whole is just giving him that one borough. Mm. So, obviously, you know, there's going to be tensions and dramas there. And the whole story is about somebody who used to be in the sanctuary with him. Um, that we didn't see in the original show and somebody who was like his number one fucking uh, crony who ends up becoming, taking his teachings and his style, that's how he ends up taking New York by mimicking Negan. Oh, Lord. Was it six episodes as well? Yeah. They're all right episodes. They're not. <laughs> Listen. <clears throat> I'll, give, I'll give it this much <laughs> it's a little more fun in that and it's a little more coherent of a story from episode one to episode six they're going on one straight linear adventure where uh, everything kind of just ties together as and same thing with Daryl Dixon whereas you saw with this one uh, it was a lot of adventure you know what I mean like this was a lot of adventure cut up into the six episodes. You don't get to see all of the adventure in the Rick and Michonne show, but in the other two, you see everything is what I'm trying to say. It's kind of in real time almost. If it's all so, connected in one way or another, then I might have to give it a shot. It, it was a fun show. It's, a, it's like watching an action movie. It, it's just like, it, it, that's the action movie. The Daryl Dixon is more about ambiance, and it's kind of like a spin on the golden child. This one was the big mega blockbuster they were hoping for. But 
there's a clip of fucking Morgan saying I have to go find Rick. Like, how many of these shits yeah. are they going to try to pull off to go find Rick? You know what? That's a great point, actually, is they ended Morgan's storyline by saying, I'm going off to find Rick now. And it's like, but you don't need to find Rick. <laughs> Rick's already found. So what's going on, Morgan? It makes you feel like the story is all over the place. And then they brought Gabriel back for like almost no reason. Cause like it, he didn't really have any bearing on the story at all, except for I giving felt, a little context to Jadis. Yeah. He was, you could tell Jadis had, had a thing for him. Remember, I don't know that I, I stopped watching the main show, just in the little clips that they showed, like he was her humanity. Even though. She was supposed to be some hard ass. Oh yeah, but that's the whole. You're right. There's, that's he was her humanity, which is why when in the end, so he was an important plot point. He's the reason she gave up the dossier after um, Rick or whatever the zombie got her, and she was dying. She finally was like, "All right, here's that dossier. So now you're safe." Yeah. Oh, well, you and know, she did that because gay Briol. It was like I said. The ending just felt a little lackluster. I enjoyed it for what it was. I mean, would I have enjoyed a second season? Sure. If the second season would have been, you know, a good story behind it. But, hey, if you wanted to just be one and done, so be it. I mean, there's got to be another story coming. Look, you, when you see Daryl, you'll see there's a whole other CRM uh, in in uh, uh, internationally and yeah, but the general mentions that he does. That's what I'm saying. He, he says we have spies and in international communities embedded there and shit. So that sets up the international intrigue. So there's going to be a crossover of CRM versus whoever the fuck. But Darryl now who's in charge with. of the CRM? Good question. Don't know. Because now the CRM is opened and all this other bullshit. Like it just doesn't. You eliminated the leadership by killing the general and everyone there. And so it's just one of those. By doing that, you created more of a plot point going forward. You don't explain it well in that finale. You show Rick and fucking Michonne get off the helicopter and they reunite with the kids. And, you know, so you're the brave one. Yes, you, can call, me dad. But you, can you can call me dad. You can call me dad. <laughs> Coral. Coral, you turn black. Coral. The, I'm sorry, RJ. He gives me vibes of he ain't built for this world. Well, I mean, he's, gro he's grown up. That kind of leads into the comic book ending because he's growing up in this soft world. Which is why Herschel, uh, Maggie and Glenn's son, as an adult, is running around. Stealing zombies? Because you cut out Blind again. people the fear of what they used to have to live in um, because they're too comfortable in their lives now and they become soft. Um, so it becomes Carl versus Herschel in that final issue over that storyline because Carl kills Herschel's zombies but then carl has to go to court for it because yeah property he destroyed the guy's property so stupid the but what? i guess since i didn't keep reading it and i just read the final issue oh it was stupid it was they it had nothing to do with where they were going robert kirkman did it out of uh it was it he did it because he sold the entire thing to The Walking Dead. He didn't think The Walking Dead was going to be a hit like that. He figured, shit, at worst, this show will come out. I'm going to sell him the rights. It's going to fucking go a couple of years. I'm going to keep writing my comic long after. I'll fucking have a little extra audience for it. It'll be great. But what happened is the show became such a fucking hit that he ended up writing uh, these new characters for free. For 10 years where like every character he would write would become the next huge hit on TV. And he's seeing no extra money for it. He's, you know, seeing no larger rewards. This is why he just is in the middle of or just won a $250 million lawsuit against them. But he had uh, he ended it right there 
because they had an arc where this whole new sheriff character was coming and they even did it on the show. They actually used that character a bit in fear the walking dead. Um, and, uh, yeah, there was this, all these previews for what was coming in the next couple of months. And then it was like, nah, I'm just ending it here. So that way he doesn't have to create any more characters that AMC would get for free. Uh, but I mean, you signed a contract, so it's on you. You're the one who sold away all the rights to whoever you created. It is. And you know what's on us? The fact that we only have 30 minutes left and we, we have to get into the title of this. And we have to talk about our good friend, Luke, the little jerk. Who has the, the, the little jerk, as you, you mentioned beforehand, because uh, uh, I dropped the link to Luke, because yesterday I made a show, and then right after I ended it, Luke goes, oh, so no go then? I was going to join. Little where jerk. Where did he write that? In our little fucking uh, little group chat. He's like, I was going to join. I guess I should have said something. Uh, and it's like, I don't think he was going to join, number one. Uh, he's just being a fucking weirdo. Um, since he hasn't even said hello, he doesn't even say hello anymore. So it's like, what? That's it. That's what we're good for. Shit. Yeah, it's very strange. Oh, these shows because you're fucking driving your fucking head into the fucking dirt and you're fucking turn your life into a fucking shit show out of, out of it. No hellos. You're right, Lou. You're right. It is kind of annoying. So now the question is, what are we doing Sunday? I'm working. What's going on Sunday? Alpha Pod Rants. Is that still oh, a thing? No, there's no more Alpha Pod Rants. He said that he wasn't feeling it and he was uh, um, good. We were going to maybe do nerds or talking because that way he and he could still join it um, and be a part of it. He just doesn't have to set it up. I think setting up the fucking show is too much for him. Whatever. Whatever it may be. Uh, what's going on over here then? No fucking clue. No clue. We're just floundering. Look, I just made a new intro, and I just wanted to play it. I just That's all it is. This is just, you know, running out some steam. That's all. This isn't a show, you morons. All right, so I don't have to worry about our show Sunday. No, uh, I guess not. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can. Uh, if you want, maybe we could do a show Monday. Um, yeah, because you're off Monday. Monday's fine. And we could do a little nerds are talking about uh, Star Trek program and whatever. But uh, I have no problem. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's the end of that. I I and I, I said what uh, you said, and I said I would say what you said, what I said, what I said that you said. Now we've said it. So is Diddley not a diddler? What, what what's going on with Diddy P? I don't I don't believe so. Um, where can I get a fucking picture of? Let's see. Let me puff. I'm gonna write real slow. Dad D. Enter. Okay. So. Um, why can't I share this instead? <laughs> Oh, Scotty Jones, you're funny. I have yeah. this on, so I don't have to engage in real life conversation in the other room. Oh, I yeah. get it. Uh, yeah, I think maybe Puff Daddy. I don't think maybe Diddy got to be guilty of something. Yo, I'm sure he is, and I'm sure he's guilty of participating in this uh, scam. Remember, this is the same guy who pushes voter die. Um. And now he's probably pushing something else. Think about it this way. This is all going on right now. Everybody's saying Puff Daddy's a sex trafficker. Why? What evidence? What fucking reason? It's just suddenly one day we all woke up and the whole internet is like, oh, Puff Daddy, he's the Jeffrey Epstein. He's raping children's. He's selling children's. It, uh, also, in the middle of this Dan Schneider Nickelodeon thing, uh, see, mind you, I mm -hmm. have one question. Mm -hmm. Did he never touch the kid? Who? Everything he's done has been with adults. I dare say he's. You're breaking up again. The thing is, it's none of that. 
could be literally woke up in a world where everybody is is crying fucking uh puff the magical pedophile and there's just no reasons around it we're gonna find out with it i think six months i think they're gonna let this marinate at least a few months and then we're gonna find out he did nothing it's completely exonerated it's gonna be egg on everybody's fucking face and then the reason they're doing it uh, so well timed with quiet on set and these Nickelodeon who, if you don't think they've got as much money as God, well, you don't fuck it. If you don't think Nickelodeon can put out a campaign like this to cover their own ass, you're crazy. But now the next time a high profile um, celebrity fucking like child rapist or sex traffic scandal comes up, Everyone's going to go like this. Yeah, just like that time you retards thought Puff Daddy was Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> it's guaranteed. All the bots, the little fucking, the useful idiots, they're all going to start chirping exactly that line. And that's the point of this bullshit story. So I'm putting it, I'm saying it here, folks. P, P. Diddy is not a P. Diddler. Uh, this is all a psyop, a grand old psyopry. This is my theory, and I'm sticking to it 100%. Sergeant Greenleaf says, Well, Kanye went hard against the Jays and the establishment, and they never pulled child toucher stuff on him. No, all they did was pull his billions. Did they even do that, though? Did that yes, even work? Did. He lost money. When he lost the Adidas, the Adidas deal, he lost his billions of dollars, because that's where all the money was coming from. Those sneakers were making him a fortune. Well, but his he fucking... He lost They everything. did the world a service, Lou. They got rid of that fucking drab fucking line of clothing he sells. Oh, my God. That shit's horrendous. So, good for them. And, I mean, Dr. Scotty Jones is saying, Usher said P. Diddy raped his ass to the point he went to the hospital. No, no. Somebody else says Usher's asshole was raped out. Look... Yeah, it's suspect, like this man says. Uh, what he, the stuff did he do? For instance, uh, telling Fifty Cent, uh, "I want to take you shopping." You know, Fifty Cent is having a blast with this shit. But, he makes but, a joke out of all I, this. A homosexual, sure. Um, it's like, like, is is Puffy a secret gay? A secret Peter Puffer? Definitely. Bro, um, I'm sorry. Half allegedly. These industry folk swing both ways. Sure. It's a no, no, no. You know, you what me personally, what you do in your private life is your business. Yeah, but it's not private. Like I like I said, what the fuck was that guy's name? The comptroller, uh James. I, I used to name him on the old shows. All the time, because uh, it was just crazy. James, uh, what the fuck was his goddamn name? He was the he was the comptroller of New Jersey, a New Jersey comptroller. Probably not anymore. James, let's see what comes up. Uh, let's see. Citizen, mm, mm. not everything has to be double cock stuff. <laughs> Sorry. No, funny enough, the former. Comptroller is Philip James Degnan. That's not the guy I'm looking for. James, what the fuck was his name? Anyway, this guy, like many other guys, none of this stuff is is behind closed doors. Uh, at, at John Corzine's fucking victory party, uh, it was held at a police officer's bar in Patterson, New Jersey, um, because you know you want to have it in as hidden of a place as you can. Um, and no one's looking for you in Patterson, New Jersey, in the middle of the ghetto, let me tell you. No one's looking for a bunch of fucking politicians and bigwigs in this fucking dive bar, uh, which is a cop bar. Um, what the fuck, Richard? And this guy would come in with his little boy page, uh, boy intern, like it was his page. And this guy, he'd always have different ones, and they always looked like they were just over 18-year-old blonde boys. Uh, and he would always take, go, they would always go with them to the bathroom and they'd always be in the bathroom very, very long times. And while they're in there, everybody knows what's going on. Like they're coming out, wiping the cocaine off of their nose and the cum off their lips. Uh, none of it was secret. Everybody knew like the guy took my fucking friend, Justin. 
uh, because he caught saw I had <laughs> look this guy on the this was on the Corzine campaign Justin he had t- stolen one of our vans uh, that we used to you know fill with people to drive around and go out canvassing and knock on doors and shit he stole one of our vans and went and bought crack a whole lot of crack um, came back <laughs> and was smoking crack. Um, now he was supposed to be going and gassing him up, but you know, he went and took it fucking gone an hour, goes to the ghetto, buys crack, comes back. And I fucking, cause he's like a really good friend of mine. He's like, he actually was trained by the guy who was trained by Bruce Lee. This guy that trained him is there's even a movie about him. I don't remember the guy's name, but so like this guy was like a third generation uh, trainee of Bruce Lee in a, or whatever second generation you got Bruce Lee trained a guy and this guy trained my friend Justin not Ip Man P- Mr. Panda Panda um, although we were making Ip Man jokes around the time that movie came out with this guy but anyway so I fucking took this kid by the fucking throat and I fucking nailed him into the fucking wall and I'm like you fucking motherfucker I give you this opportunity and you fucking do this da-da-da. and I'm like going off on him and then I'm like, I'm, I was like, you're fucking either going to get your ass kicked right now or you're going to take these fucking, you're going to go mow. I said, you're going to go mow the lawn. Uh, and, I, and I said, you fucking choose. And he's like, I- I'll mow the lawn. And I handed him a pair of scissors. And I said, go mow the fucking lawn. And then we're talking right out in front of the office. So he's on his hands and his knees cutting the lawn with scissors. <laughs> and the gay guy, James, whatever his name was, the comptroller comes up. He drives up on a Porsche, pulls up right after him. this kid's shirtless, you know, and trained, trained to a man under Bruce Lee. So, you know, he's all fit and shit. He's got Bruce Lee physique. And he's all sweaty in the sun. He's blonde. And this guy just walks up going to talk to me about something and then just goes, so, uh, uh, oh, oh, my. And just starts staring at him and then flirts with him, ends up saying, we should go get drinks. They go out for drinks that night. The next day, Justin comes and tells me. Uh, he woke up, they were drinking, at, at, they were drinking at a bar downstairs from Justin's house. Uh, and he says, after one drink, he said, everything was fine. He was just started getting drunk. And that's the last thing he remembers. And then he woke up and this sounds like a joke, but it's not. He said, he woke up with pants on in his bed. His door was wide open. He only lived in like one of those rooms. It was like a room, you know, where you like rent out just a room in like a hallway you know what I'm talking about? Those kind of places. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like an apartment. They all they'll have like a shared bathroom down the hall, and it's just like one room each. For yeah, so yeah, he's a, living. It's called living in New York City. Yeah, it's like that, except New Jersey, Lindhurst, New Jersey. And he said that his pants were off, his door was open, and his asshole was slimy, and it hurt. <laughs> this is a fucking true, true, true fucking story. And everybody knew this. And all that would be done is we would just make fun of him and be like, you yeah, know, well, we're going to send you back to James. What the fuck was maybe his last name was James. I don't remember what it is. I want to know because he was such a piece of shit. Uh, I, lo- I like to uh, make sure I tell the story with his name. But yeah, comptroller during the time of Corzine. That's who we're looking for here. Oh, yeah. Let's try that. Comptroller during Corzine. But uh well, God damn. Yeah, so this this stuff is not a secret. I'm not going to find this motherfucker's name. Not a secret what these people do. Because again, Joe Biden, I've said this a million times. So on one hand, because shit rolls downhill, on one hand, I would threaten my friend Justin with future rape encounters. <laughs> I would say, I'm going to send you out with what's his name again. I'm going to send you to go work for what's his name. You're gonna, like that. You're going to have a fucking, uh, you're going to have a fucking juicy fucking blown out butthole every night. You're going to wake up in fucking strange beds, not knowing what's going on. But, uh, my higher ups, they would make fun of me or, and threaten me. We're going to send you to go work for, uh, uncle Injun Joe. We're going to send you for Uncle Injun Joe. Because, like, in one thing I did in particular, because the Democratic Party does tons of, it's all voter fraud. Everything we were doing. And I'm I'm talking, I work right next, my desk was head on with the sheriff of, of, of um, Passaic County, New Jersey. 
my desk and his desk were touched face to face. So like I would sit at my desk and he would sit at his desk and we were face to face. You know what I mean? Um, that's how ingrained in the system this was. These were the machine candidates and, and it was all about fraud. Um, so me being an innovator, I like to stretch the game. I like to do, do things different. So one of the tactics that I had done um, was pretty goddamn dirty. I didn't know how dirty it was at the time. I thought this. I thought I was doing a light version of what these motherfuckers are doing. I didn't think I was really uh, going over the line. But there, but but apparently, what I was doing was so illegal that they were like, "If you get caught, you're gonna go work for Uncle Joe. Uh, we're gonna send you to work for Uncle Joe." It was a constant fucking joke that the Democrats would make because one, he's just a doddering idiot. Two. He's a racist. Three, he's your creepy uncle because he's a pedophile. And, and four, he touches bungholes. That's where you go to work. And they would also joke, but don't worry, you'll be in the White House with him one day. So, like, I'm dead ass. This is how it would go. We're going to send you to work for him because you're too corrupt. For you, You're going to fucking, you belong with the devil. But don't worry, you'll end up working with him for the White House. He brings everyone with him. These were jokes, but look what happened. He's in the White House now. He's in the motherfucking So I guess I wish I did a little bit worse. I wish I fucking took that punishment. Sometimes I wish after the Corzine, when I had Obama and Hillary Clinton both poaching me off of the Dennis Kucinich campaign because of what I did uh, in, was that New Hampshire? New Hampshire? When I had Martin Luther King's office? That was New Hampshire, right? Or was that? Yeah. No, that was not. It was New Hampshire. Yeah. I worked Corzine in New Hampshire. Not Corzine. Uh, Kucinich in New Hampshire. Yes. Okay. So it was, uh, it was, um, they had this big event. Like I said, my office was both um, Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy Jr. Both held the office that I was fucking just smoking weed in all fucking day on this campaign. And uh, sleeping in, uh, and uh, every day. Well, the the owner of the building, his son was a weed dealer, and I believe I believe his son was Banksy. He was uh because he was a a graffiti artist, and then they would well, you definitely know who this guy is, but you wouldn't know his face and this and that. And that's how they would talk about him. But uh, so I think he was Banksy. I found out who Banksy was later. You know, this is just correlations I made. Who else is an unknown fucking graffiti artist like? It, nothing adds up. But anyway, he had a fucking literal pool table with a mountain of bags of weed. I've told this story on the air many times where I went over there one day because, like, I'm bringing in a bunch of political people in suits, right, to the office for a meeting. And this motherfucker comes walking down the hallway from the back and just starts going, hey, anyone need weed? And, like, that, <laughs> like it was all fucking illegal at the time. And I don't even, these are fucking people in suits. Like, I, why would you do that? But I see this guy and I'm like, and everyone looks at me funny. I'm like, I don't know. He's just, just the owner of this building's son. I don't know him. And as, the, as I'm ushering everybody in, I look at the guy and I fucking give him the finger like, one, mi one minute, one minute. <laughs> I'm like, I do, I do, one minute. Because I hadn't smoked in fucking days. And then uh, I bring these people in. And I was like, you know what? I stood there for a minute. I was like, let me make sure there's no trouble with this fucking guy. Was, that was weird, wasn't it, guys? That was really weird. Let me just make sure just because I'm like, like lurking the hall or something. <laughs> so I go back out and then I, I'm like, hey, you got weed? Yo, you got like a, can I just get like a dub? Because that was the terminology back then. It means 20 bag. And he's like, yeah, no problem. And it's coming the back. And then, and then uh, he reaches onto that pool table and he hands me this huge bag of weed. He throws it at me. And I was like, uh, a dub. I said a 20, like a 20 bag. You got a 20. He's like, that's a 20 bag. I was like, oh, okay give it to him best fucking weed I ever smoked still haven't smoked weed that good in my life um and then I went back to the meeting but uh the operation I pulled there was um which was also interfered with by Blackwater pencil pushers Sean Mullins that's one name I remember yeah that was his name <laughs> I think I don't remember his fucking name it was Sean I remember that much he worked for Blackwater and he came in and he like shut the whole fucking shit down, had us not get our vans had so that we couldn't get our people out and all this other shit. Like he really mad subterfuge. But there there was this event and it was for Obama. Uh, Oprah was there. Um, and I had done this disruption routine where we turned their event 
which they paid probably a few million for to rent this arena and to do everything. And we took about $15,000 of uh, flyers that were being used to build a box fort uh, in one of those extra places in our, in our in the building, one of the extra rooms. We turned it into a box fort that everybody had, like all the interns were living in uh, because it had one word. This is the kind of subterfuge that was wrong. We had spent 15 grand on like 100, 200, 300,000 pieces of lit. And they were like, well, this says like, um, we will be victorious. It should say we will with big W with big letters. It should say we will be victorious. Fucking that. Actually, I think I'm going down. I think maybe it was 15,000 pieces of lit for like $30,000 or something like that. It was a lot of money, but anyway, and that also took a lot of time to get. So the timing of that, like this guy shut that shit down. There was a lot of shit, but like I said, we had all this stuff as a box for it. So I said, fuck this. We're going to take over Obama's event. And I took all those people who, because again, this guy, he got our vans fucking shut down. Like I even had the fucking van guy ready to go to court to prove the van rental place because he was ready to rent us a hundred fucking vans. He had them all set to go. But then he kept getting calls from the higher up this guy uh, shutting it down every last, uh, every time. Um, and I would get like approved, et cetera. It's, it's a crazy story. It's a long story, but so now having this fucking bur- bullshit literature, that's fine. Except, you know, the, let's say the word will is, is not big enough. Uh, and having no vans, I took my fucking hundreds of fucking employees and said, let's go. Fuck it. We're walking. We walked. Cause this event just happened to be a few blocks away from where we were. We took all that literature and we turned it into a giant fucking lit dump for Kucinich. And it really, uh, it pushed things over the edge from there. Cause I was also, uh, doing fucking hash oil with this fucking weirdo Caleb who worked for Ron Paul. He, uh, he was like the same position I was for Kucinich. He was for Ron Paul. We were the top guy. There's campaign manager, which basically says yes or no to everything I do. And then there's me, uh, like, I'm the guy who comes up with it and and executes it. He's just the guy. The campaign manager is the guy who says yes or no. So we ended up picking up such steam from there that we ended up uh, getting uh, Ron Paul and Kucinich to agree to run on a bipartisan ticket to where whichever, if one of them won, the other would be vice president. We had fucking just just a uh, just huge groundswell going. Willie Nelson and Sarah McLaughlin came out to do this concert uh for for this thing now and it all started because of that but uh it got shut it, it, it. and in breaking news we lose jim for a brief second because his microphone is acting stupid they were they wanted me to work for them and i was just like nope i took my fucking payout and i fucking left i think they gave me like eight grand to go away and i went away uh the kuzinich campaign we lost you for a second, but I got a call. Hold on. Mm, mm. So, uh, what did, uh, what did, what, what did we lose me or did he lose me? Because he got a call. I mean, who lost me? Somebody out there, tell me, please. But Sergeant Greenleaf says, my dealer is doing coke and pills and watching pyramid videos. He's manic. I might have to stop going over there. I was going to be sick from anxiety, but his manic behavior and pyramids from his manic behavior and pyramid videos black. What the fuck is a pyramid video? I don't know. It was funny, man. You're telling your story, and then you're like, total silence. And I'm like, and another breaking news, Jim's microphone cuts out, and he doesn't even know it. I guess so. So I don't even know what, where, what, where did it end? Because that, I literally, I that was the you. end of, that was the end of the story. All right. So good times, since we're almost out of time. Good times. Do you see the trailer for the fucking animated version of the Norman Lear classic, Good Times? No. Well, no, and, yeah, and it's an updated version. It's not the old cast it's, or characters. It's new characters. J.B. Smoove is the lead voice. That's cool. But what's not cool is the fucking trailer is like, everything's black. Black this, black that, black this, black that. Everything's black. Like, they keep just saying, everything's black at all these parts. There's a fucking drug-dealing toddler in the goddamn thing. Like, everyone's saying nigga. It's like, this is not motherfucking... That's not good times. That's not 
fucking uh, social commentary. That's just stereotypes and fucking more of this blatant racism that these clowns fucking engage in while telling us we're racists while telling us the ones who just fucking make a silly little fucking joke that might have the word nigga in it or fucking you know it might, might, might be a slightly dark humor uh we're the bad guys but these fucking asshole cunts who are running around with fucking drug dealing babies going everything's black they're the fucking heroes I mean, I bet a lot of these people listening right now are like, that sounds like a hero to me. Well, it's not, okay? It's not. That's uh, a jerk. Um, so, hmm. peanut butter jelly? No. Okay. I'm kicking, can't wait to go watch the corners right now. Uh, Norman Lear was absolutely top notch. It's when television was honest, oh uh, and that's why you can watch All in the Family. You you should watch. You could watch Good Times now. I don't understand why they're doing this to Good Times when you can take the literal scripts from that show, animate them, not change a word, and you've got a fucking relevant socially powerful whatever fucking show you've got something that hits all the points of right now why because they're the same points that are constantly fucking thrown around they're the same things that are being used to play us but they don't want that this isn't about progress this isn't a show for black people this is a show to mock black people that's what the new good times is but like um like the cast members from the original series say We've not seen it yet, so we have to hold our judgment. It just doesn't look good right now. It doesn't look good. The cast members, they're even like, once we saw how it came out, we're like, uh, okay, this is a little weird, and I guess that's why they threw us in there as little cameos so that they could be like, well, you know, the old cast is there, so it's not so bad. But it is. It's very bad. And yes, this is what the end of an empire looks like or is it what the beginning of the empire looks like i mean honestly yo which is it honestly honestly i'm gonna give you honesty what are we talking about right now good times I have no fucking idea oh yeah good times god damn aaron stayed up late holy shit what a great thing to talk about so yesterday's stream, did you enjoy it for a brief second? <laughs> what? Mm. When I was racing. Yeah, and then I said nope, and I went back to play Witcher. Nope. What? You, not your. I mean, yeah, it's not your cup of tea. Okay. Bored. Witcher. You're playing the Witcher series. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I see. I bought three because it was on sale, so I got it for dirt cheap. But I did not like it. Oh, how far do you get? Because, I mean, it takes a little while to, like... Uh, I didn't like the graphics. Okay, maybe you got it. Well, get. Do you have it on your PS? Yeah. There's a free PlayStation 5 upgrade. Try again. Because I'm thinking about... This is what I found out. after I bought it on sale as well. It was, I think it was, like, $13. Some for the shit com- like that. <laughs> complete edition. Yeah, I bought that and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because oh, wow. I, I played it while it was free for the weekend, and I did not love it. Playing as a victim was really fun. Um, but play- playing as the killer isn't, because you get to kill everybody, and it's no fun, and you broke didn't up like again. It. But, um, yeah, I, I bought it, though, because it was on sale. And I'm like, well, I, I like it a little bit, and I might want to play it again. So I just it was on sale for 20 bucks, and I was like, and if I do want to play it, I don't want to pay 40 bucks. So I bought it. But... Um, I found out I bought, even though I bought the Witcher on sale, I kind of wasted money because I tell my son, I was like, Hey, I got Witcher. If you want to play it on the computer, on your computer. And he's like, uh, I already have it on the PlayStation five and it has a free upgrade. I've had it for like three years. Stupid. I was like, Oh, okay. Sorry. Jeez. And then he hit me. The problem is I don't, I don't know if I have the space to add it to the PS five. It's like 50 gigabytes. Shit. Not even that big a game. Most of these games are fucking ridiculously too big. Oh, man. What do you got planned today? Uh, Connors, uh, as soon as this ends, because I uh, can't wait to see who dies. And then... Uh, I'm just going to put it to you like this. You're going to be disappointed. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. 
uh, I'm positive, I, but I'm, I, that's what I like to do. I like to set myself up for disappointment so then I have something to complain about on the next show. Uh, and then have something to complain about. I'm sure I'm sure. And then discovery. Yeah. I'll get to that at some point today. And then maybe the witcher. And then if I have time, I'm going to go to the hospital. Have you tried putting your foot in some Epstein salt? Jeffrey Epstein. I don't know that Epsom salt. <laughs> I have not, but you know what? Speaking of Jeffrey Epstein, his lookalike Chrissy Mayer has anybody. Here you go. Here's your dabble verse content of the day. Dickheads. Is this has, dabble verse? Ain't they compound? Uh, it's dabble verse. It's trust me. Compound is nothing more than a dabble verse. Uh, it's, it's dabble verse premium. They, it's not even premium. It's you, you pay for like a lesser version of the dabble verse <laughs> at compound, but, but aren't they She's, with YouTube? Look, I don't know if this is true. Elon Musk, maybe you can uh, clarify. Maybe Dr. Scotty, maybe Richard, maybe Sargentle. Somebody let us know, uh, is this true? Uh, that Chrissy Mayer was begging on the internet for money for people to uh, help her build a new studio. Anyone heard of this? Uh, like I'm, I stop, like I'm waiting for an answer from fucking people who don't have microphones. Here you go, bitch. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. I don't want any other answer yet. Yeah, so I don't know. You know who I bet knows that little cunt named Luke. That's of the bind. Luke always putting people in a bind. Luke, Luke, who has no use for people once they fucking have no fucking, uh, you know, they have no gain for him. So, Dr. Jones is saying, I didn't hear about that. Uh, this is what I'm, let me, let me message these people. Go ahead, you're saying? I was going to say, well, on that news, well, time for the outro. Oh, all right. Well, I guess we have, uh, no, wait, I did just come up with, um, it says it right here, I just messaged them, and so we have the answer now. They have said... Start whining because the mountains out of you. Snow lines miles above them, they begin to root. They're not human beings. They're just snakes in the snow. This is fucking unbelievable. What other surprises you got? You ever get the feeling that everything in America is completely fucked up? You know that feeling? The whole country is like one inch away from saying, that's it, forget it. You think about it, everything's polluted. Firemen, the government, schools, you name it. That doesn't sound like a monster to me, lady. <laughs> you want a monster, I'll give you a monster. <laughs> I no, it was only a joke. Is that why I'm laughing so hard? Now, don't be afraid. This eliminates enough. You point it, and people fall down. You point it, and people fall down. Yeah. What? Hey. You know, let's take it back, sir. You know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna take my chances with Daddy. You are such a disappointment. You're gonna be a punch. Freeze! Try again! Ah! Victor.